Hey, I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the top five mistakes that I see people make when they're setting up their automated emails. First up is accidentally setting up overlapping emails. Because email automations send at their own time in their own cadence, they can overlap with your, like your monthly newsletters or your sale email campaigns, or you can have two automations that clash with each other. For example, if you have a welcome series and you also have a freebie that you're giving out, it could be that people will end up in two sequences at the same time. So you need to pick a priority or you need to have one that sorts and removes people who are already getting the other one. As for overlapping with a regular campaign, I would recommend standardizing to some extent the days of the week and the times that you send those emails so you know that your weekly email always goes out on Tuesdays. Well, then when you set up your automations, you have them never send on a Tuesday. Next up is not setting up a trigger to remove people from an automation. This is something that is fairly easy if you have like an e-commerce integration. It makes sense that if someone's getting an abandoned cart email and they buy something, they yes, they'll be removed. But if you have an organization where things are a bit more manual, you may need to be a little creative with this and they may not be as perfect of a process. I mean, yes, you could manually remove them or add a tag that then removes them. You could also have it remove them when they click on any link in an email or a specific link. And you can add some sort of integration. So if they book a call through a Calendly link, if they make a purchase through Stripe or through your QuickBooks, you also can use Zapier to connect all kinds of other things. So if you have an outgoing email that has specific words, then they get removed. Again, you can connect it with like with your personal Gmail account. You can connect it to a Google Sheet that when their name gets added to the Google Sheet. There's many other ways that you can organize to remove them from an automation that they should no longer be receiving. The next mistake that I see is people assuming that their emails are being seen in order, like in the order that you've created them. They are not. The average open rate of any email in the world is 20%. Hopefully yours are a bit higher, but that means that at least half of them are not opening it. They're not clicking it and they're not taking the time to read it. So while in your mind you are setting up emails one and then they get two and then they get three and then they get four, it could very well be that all they see is number three. And so you really need to make sure that if you are referencing previous emails that you have a way of summarizing what was in them, that you are repeating important things that happened in those emails. And if you have an email that is vital that they see it, like the initial onboarding email or something like that, I would recommend resending that email to people who didn't open it. Give them another chance to see it. And you can work that right into your automation. Next up, stop working so hard at creating content for your emails. This is especially the case with a welcome series. If someone is brand new to your list, they have seen nothing you have ever sent. So there is good stuff that you've already created that you can reuse in those welcome emails. Also, just as I mentioned before, they're not reading every single email. So don't be scared to repeat yourself. And finally, keep your automations as evergreen as possible. Don't put things in there that are going to expire time-wise. And then by that same token, make sure to check in with those emails every once in a while. See what you're sending. I have seen clients who have had the same welcome email sending for five years. It could be that all that information is still applicable. It very much could also be that it's time to update it. So make sure that you check in on those. Well, there we go. I hope that this helped you out. Never mind. I know it helped you. Um, if you need more help, I have videos on how to make automated emails in MailChimp, as well as a whole bunch of troubleshooting videos for when you run into problems. Make sure that you give this a little thumbs up and a thank you in the comments. Subscribe to my email list so I can keep helping you and I will see you around.